my name is Ryan Marita. I will be the second for me. And uh, what the negative had stated in his claim, in his kind of claim, was that uh, keeping the current minimum legal drinking age of 21 actually saves lives. In fact, actually, according to uh, drunk driving statistics, the decrease in drunk driving fatalities and the total traffic fatalities in the United States does not correlate to the minimum age drinking law. Since 1982, two years prior to the Uniform Drinking Age Act, establishing a minimum, minimum drinking age of 21, the decline of drunk driving fatalities occurred across all age groups and demographic categories, and therefore cannot be reliably attributed to minimum drinking age of 21. Now, the negative also claims that, that the drinking age is actually effective in keeping it at 21 will actually prevent any more underage drinking and abuse of alcohol. But, I, but actually, um, according to uh, Reason Magazine by Robbie Sloan, the current drinking age is, does not actually stop teens from drinking, it only changes where and how much they drink. Now, teens and young adults will continue to drink wherever they will be able to find any alcohol because simply because it's legal and they get a better rush from getting something illegal. And uh, my opponent also claimed that it will provide better drinking habits or safer drinking habits if the minimum age was still at 21. And also that there does not need to be more education, that there does need to be more education when it comes to drinking at a age. But actually, along the drinking age, there needs to be more educational programs to reduce the abuse of alcohol. Because with a lower drinking age, lower drinking age, children and younger people need to be exposed to the dangers and the, the truth about alcohol abuse and everything that comes along with it. Now, uh, to further justify my partner's claims, um, a significant significant claim show the rate at which the young people and adults were drinking, such as, such in college and the ages of 19 and 20. Um, according to, according to the National Center of Addiction and Substance Abuse at Columbia University, on, the, on an average year, an estimated $128 billion is spent on alcohol. And out of that $128 billion, $22.5 billion was money spent by underage drinkers. Further justify my partner's inherited claim that the current minimum drinking age creates the harm of unsafe drinking practices. <laughs> to further justify it, the current drinking age doesn't actually, doesn't actually stop teens from drinking. It just tells them it just encourages them more to drink more because it's illegal and. It, brings on to the forbidden fruit effects. In many societies, according to uh, David J. Hansen, in many societies, most people drink and they begin doing so in the home from an early age. There is neither any evidence or only reason to even suspect that, mem that members of that group are brain damaged and prepared to drink. Now, the now, because this, this forbidden fruit issue, because it's illegal, encourages teenagers to drink more. These teenagers and young adults will still continue to drink illegally because teens nowadays can get alcohol and any other illegal substance easily. But these teens will put themselves more at risk because the age is at 21. These teens and young adults will be able to, go to, will be able to illegally drink and take other substances at places such as unsupervised parties, hiring older adults to buy them on the home, buying legal fake IDs, and in some cases, robbing them for stores. And to uh, further justify my partner's solvency claim that the lowering of the MLBA minimum, minimum drinking age would improve and increase safe drinking practices. Now, if the law was lowered, then adults and parents everywhere would just treat this as another coming of age privilege that everyone's given, such as getting a hunting license at age 12, driver's license at age 16, and being able to operate a business at 18. 
these par parents and other adults would treat it as something that people just naturally come of age about and would possibly encourage it. According to Dwight B. Heath, a professor at Brown University, um, he claims that certain places in France and Italy give their children uh, small amounts of alcohol moderation. And he believes this is a positive thing because it teaches, teaches parents and educates their kids about alcohol and it robs drinking of their of its taboo lure, which can make rebellious teenagers think off to base the commands and backwards to binge drinking far from adult supervision. He also claims that in general, the younger people start to drink, the safer they are. So in conclusion, that underage people are still drinking, which is which is at a high rate. The minimum drinking age creates the harm of unsafe drinking practices, which is true because teens and young adults will continue to put themselves at harm just to obtain alcohol. And that lowering the drinking age would improve and increase safe drinking practices because adults and parents would teach kids at a lower age about the truth about alcohol and it would be less looked upon by society.